NFL Offseason Madness. So the Super Bowl is tomorrow and seems like some people are trying to get an early jump start on the offseason madness. So first we have Mr. Rooney, the owner of the Pittsburgh Steelers, coming out and mentioning Justin Fields as an option for their team in a trade, trying to maybe hedge their bet on correcting a mistake they made in ownership in trying to bet the house on the hometown product of Kenny Pickett. We also have Ian Rappaport giving us the most uh, duh statement of the offseason that Ryan Poles, GM Ryan Poles, wants an unreasonable or a massive haul or a historic haul for the number one pick or a trade for Justin Fields. Why would he not want that? He's a GM. It's his job. So this is where it's going to get interesting this year. We all have to understand we live in a 24-hour media cycle. There's a lot of shows going on. There's a lot of podcasts going on. And they have to fill their airtime with something. They have to create intrigue where there is not. Now, I'm going to do a um, history lesson video later on where we're going to talk about how this all went last year. It seems like everybody has forgotten about how this went last year. It's the same situation. It's not really much different other than the Bears also have an extra first round pick this season with pick number nine. So I'm going to discuss how having that extra first round pick ahead of QB needy teams puts those teams in a bind to try to have to trade up and get a quarterback. But before we get started, smash that like button, hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell to make sure you stay locked in to Draft Capital Sports where we provide all the NFL draft news, NFL offseason news, trades, etc. for your 2024 NFL offseason. Now let's get back to the video. First, let's look at all the QB needy teams in this draft. And I mean teams that really don't have a starting quarterback on the roster or they have a quarterback who is a free agent or a quarterback who is, well, shout out to the Seattle Seahawks, old. But first, let's start with the Washington Commanders, whose incumbent QB Sam Howell is a young QB who is more of a career backup than he probably will be a starter. Maybe he will develop into a starter. He's very young. But Nobody believes Washington that they're going to try to start the season with Sam Howell. They've already shown their hand in the hiring of Cliff Kingsbury. They're only one pick behind the number one pick. I believe Washington has faith in themselves to be able to get Caleb Williams by hook or by crook. We'll see how that plays out. Then we have the New England Patriots with Mac Jones. Yes, Bill Belichick is gone, but the regime is kind of the same Do they take a chance on Mac Jones? I think that's all dependent upon Robert Kraft and what he feels about the situation. So the Patriots are going to be an interesting one to watch and how they move in free agency to tell what they're going to do as far as the draft and as far as their quarterback position. The Giants and Daniel Jones, uh, they have pick six, but they have a lot of money attached to Daniel Jones. Yes, they can get out of the contract after next year. But the Giants might wait this one out till next year to get a quarterback unless one falls to them at pick number six. Or they'll take one of the second round quarterbacks who probably is going to be whittled down to Spencer Rather, Michael Pratt, and the injured Jordan Travis. Next, we have the Atlanta Falcons who have sent their uh, hometown hero Shannon Sharp on a press run to try to woo Justin Fields to demand a trade to the Falcons, which is is very funny. But the Falcons have all but given up on young QB Desmond Ritter. They don't really have a capable backup. So at pick number eight, they are also a team looking for a quarterback. Next, we have the Minnesota Vikings who don't have a capable starter under contract. Kirk Cousins is a free agent. He could return or he could try to move on to greener pastures, but Minnesota Kirk Cousins, I believe, is 35, 36 years old. They're going to have to move on to and turn the page for a new quarterback sooner rather than later. We have the Denver Broncos and Sean Payton, who it seems that Sean Payton hates Russell Wilson. So Wilson probably will be traded or released, more than likely traded. They're at pick number 12. We have the Vegas Raiders, who have young Aiden O'Connell, who they gave a chance last year. I'm sure he's a backup plan for them, but the Raiders have already put out feelers and made it known that they're looking at this draft class to find their QB. 
Next, we have the Seattle Seahawks, as I already mentioned, with Geno Smith, who was on the last year of his deal, is 30 plus years old, and also probably not the long-term solution for the Seattle Seahawks at quarterback. Now they've turned the page on their coaching staff and situation. I think they're probably going to be looking to turn the page on their QB situation as well and get a young QB out of this draft or via trade if they can. And no, I don't mean Justin Fields. Next, we have the Pittsburgh Steelers, a team that did this to themselves in drafting Kenny Pickett and putting all their chips in the Kenny Pickett bucket and hoping that he could somehow become a starting QB right away. This is not Kenny Pickett's fault. This is the Pittsburgh Steelers' fault, which is why Mr. Rooney making the comments about trading for Justin Fields. Pittsburgh just doesn't have enough. And last but not least, we have the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, who do have a quarterback in Baker Mayfield, but he is a free agent. And as we can see, there are about, oh, 10 teams that need quarterback minimum. So there will be a little bit of a bidding war for Baker Mayfield, I believe. So we'll see how that shakes out. Now let's get to the draft positions. Now we have the Bears at number one, of course. The two teams behind them, the Patriots and Washington, both need quarterback. This is very similar to last season, where the Houston Texans sat at number two and the Indianapolis Colts sat at number four, and they too both needed the quarterback position. This is why Ryan Poles got the haul he did from the Carolina Panthers. And there was also another offer on the table from the Tennessee Titans. The Colts pretended like they wanted to make a deal. They did not. They did so to drive the price up on their division rival, which is another part of this process that gets overlooked, which is the gamesmanship where teams do not plan on trading up, but they want to drive the price up on their division rivals and their conference rivals who they know have to and need to trade up. Now, does this mean that the Washington Commanders will trade three to four first round picks to move up to the number one position from number two? No. The NFL owners are known for, uh, how can I say this? Working well together when it comes to things that may push the value or the price up on transactions, contracts, and player activity. Not, not accusing them of collusion. It's not collusion. Let's just say that they work very well together in monitoring the value of assets in the league. So there won't be an out-of-pocket trade to move up one spot in the uh, draft. However, we look at Atlanta at number eight, Minnesota at number 11, who the Bears pick in front of, Denver at number 12, who the Bears pick in front of, and Vegas at number 13, who the Bears pick in front of. Now, let's say the Bears did still want to draft a quarterback, just not at number one. Let's say they still wanted Marvin Harrison Jr. early in the draft, but we're going to take a quarterback like a Bo Nix or a Michael Penix Jr. or a J.J. McCarthy. Now, this, this is far-fetched, but it is possible. The Bears not only hold the pole position, pun intended, on the Washington Commanders and the Patriots with the number one pick and the Giants and the Atlanta Falcons. They also hold the position on the Minnesota Vikings, the Denver Broncos, and the Vegas Raiders with the number nine pick for whatever quarterback may fall out of those top eight picks. Now, this is a problem for teams like Seattle, Pittsburgh, and maybe Tampa Bay if they lose uh, Baker Mayfield in that their price to, to trade up is going to be astronomical. Their price to trade for Justin Fields is going to be astronomical. Why? Because the Bears don't have to do any of those things. They have two first round picks. They're going to get two blue chip players no matter what they do. Whether they decide to build around Justin Fields, whether they decide to go with a quarterback, they can go with a Caleb Williams or a Drake May. They could wait for a Michael Penix or a Bo Nix. And trust me, there is not much difference in the talent of those quarterbacks. Shout out to Jaden Daniels, the best quarterback in the draft. Now, on top of that, the lack of free agent options, and we'll run through them real quickly. Kirk Cousins, Gardner Minshew, Joshua Dobbs, Jake Browning, who I think will be going to the Tennessee Titans, Ryan Tannehill, Tyrod Taylor, Mason Rudolph, and maybe Russell Wilson via trade. 
These are not great options. And again, if you are a Chicago Bears fan, I want you to not be stressed, but to be excited about this upcoming offseason because believe it or not, the Chicago Bears are in a better position this offseason than they were last offseason. So don't be too concerned about all the rumors. You're going to hear a lot of rumors. You're going to hear a lot of nonsense because people have to fill the time up on their shows. They don't want to analyze draft picks. They don't want to watch tape like some of us YouTubers, some of us draft nerds do. Mainstream media doesn't do that. They don't want to do it. And so it's better for them to create rumors and narratives to get you guys to watch and be interested. But anyway, let me know your thoughts. Are you interested in the double trade back in the draft? Should the Bears trade back from one twice and trade back from nine? I mean, there's there's just a lot of scenarios that can go. I'm going to run a poll with this. Uh, if you already responded or voted in the poll, shout out to you. Thank you for doing that. As always, thank you for tuning in to Draft Capital Sports. Like, share, subscribe, hit that notification bell. Thank you for watching. We out. Peace.